I'll go quickly now. I want to just end with a, an example of how Jesus put this into operation. I'll give you John 16, 7 says, It's to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And then Philippians, it says, This is how you, Lisa Melillo on the front row here, this is how you should think among your, for yourself and among yourselves with the mind that you have because you belong to the Messiah, who, though in God's form, did not regard his equality with God as something that he ought to exploit. What would we call that? Pulling rank. He, if anybody ever could have pulled rank, boy, I'll tell you what, Jesus had the goods, and he didn't pull rank. He loved people. And, and my reason for, for telling you this is, and you can go to that next slide, we'll end on this one, maybe one more, but like it's the point of, well, I'll just say a phrase, and you'll know what I mean. The prodigal son. How many know what I'm talking about? Okay, it's used like frequently. You've guessed we've all heard if you've been saved any length of time, especially as it relates to salvation, right? The son in the pigsty is like a person who's caught up in sin, but they come to the senses and they come back to the father. What a beautiful symbol of the orphan returning home, right? But maybe there's a little more to this than just that. That's a truth that's contained inside a bigger package. And, and part of the clue is right here at the beginning of the chapter. It says, all the tax collectors and sinners, say it with me. Hmm, too near to him. How many people are drawing near to you? What was it about Jesus that caused sinners to draw near to them, but not draw near to the Pharisees? What was it? Presence of Holy Spirit. He carried it with him. Remember when he came up and he got baptized like a dove? Well, look into that one sometime. It was another one of those violent rending of the heavens, like it says in Isaiah, rend the heavens and come down. It came in the form of a dove, but it just, that's how God operates. So this picture is pretty, bit of a conflict of two camps, because the next one says, the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying this man receives sinners and eats with them. So maybe this is where the Pharisees were looking, and the tax collectors and sinners were over here, and Jesus loved Pellegrino, I'm sure he did, because uh, he was tuned in to the Holy Spirit. And the Pharisees and the scribes are watching him interact with these losers, tax collectors and sinners. Like, you, you could just picture them like, oh, we thought he had potential. We thought he could be somebody. But he's not hanging out with the right people. <laughs> woo -hoo. Don't say that. I was one of those not right people. <laughs> Somebody loved me in. This man receives sinners and eats with them. See, because that challenges their, their hierarchy. And it's exactly what they should have been doing. Now, we know he loves these tax collectors and sinners, but he, does he also love them? Yeah, you're all pretty quick to say that. That's great. And then it says, he spoke this parable to them. And it just says this parable. But it's not just the parable of the prodigal son. There's more to it. And, and I'm just, you know, I know I'm out of time. It's, it's noon already. But I'll just take a couple of minutes here to think it. Because it applies to our daily living, right? First of all, I don't think he knew in the morning when he was having breakfast that this was going to happen that day. I think he lived his life in coordination with heaven and listening to the Father at all times because I don't want you to think he had some special advantage that we don't have. What he did was listen to his Father all day long and he only did what he heard the Father do and saw the, saw the Father do, heard the Father say and saw the Father do. Why can't we do that? Well, because I'm not hearing God, so what do I do? Wait until you do. <laughs> It's way better to wait to hear what God says than do the wrong thing. Anybody else know about that one? Lots of tuition payments on that one. So he tells stories within a bigger story. The prodigal son's only part of it, and he's doing it for a reason. He loves these sinners, but he knows if he can get these people straightened out, they got a heck of a power package that will operate for the kingdom, and it did. Nicodemus, there's many of the Pharisees that got saved. The Apostle Paul was a Pharisee, right? Man, I'm sure glad he got saved, aren't you? The book of Romans? Uh, pretty good. So Jesus is coming up with a plan in his mind that I want to get to both sides. 
Democrats and Republicans, which other side you're on. He loves them all. How about us? Oh, sorry. Don't throw anything at me. Could you love somebody in the other political camp? Yeah. You could, you could do that without feeling like you're compromising and agreeing with them. You can have a disagreement with people. So what Jesus does is he, he's telling the story to the Pharisees using the example of the people that he's with. And, and it's really powerful. And it probably deserves more time than we can give it today. But you'll see what I'm saying here in a minute. He spoke this parable to them saying, and I'm just summarizing it, right? The first part of the story was a, a man who had 100 sheep. He lost one. What did he do? He went and found it. He brought it back. And they had a party. Is that fair? Okay. And then the next one is a woman who had 10 coins, lost a coin, and what? Found it and had a party. The third one is a man who had two sons, lost one, found him, and had a party. See it? One out of 100, one out of 10, one out of two. Who's left? One. The older brother. See it? And the older brother who's left now has to decide. He, he confronts the father and says, wait a minute, you're showing him all this favor when he, he wasted your inheritance, and I've been faithful. He doesn't deserve a party. And the father's like, look, my son who was dead is alive. Who once was lost is now it's found. We're celebrating, man. Everything I have is yours, but you make your own choice. I'm, I'm filling in some blanks here because we're not told that. But the picture I get is the father's like, all right, you can stay out here if you want to, but I'm going in because we should be able to celebrate that people that made bad decisions can be forgiven and be restored into a new life. So you see this older brother is the Pharisee at the beginning of the story. No, they don't belong in here. They didn't earn it. I had to work for my degrees and my title, and I'm going to pull rank because you don't deserve it. Did anybody here deserve getting saved? Not one of us. Don't you love the grace of God? It couldn't be by your works. Now, look, he's not opposed to effort. He just is opposed to us thinking we can earn it. And you could do this in your relationships. You could, you could ask the Lord for a strategy in every exchange that you have with other people. To the toll collector on the parkway, if you're getting changed, everybody matters to God. Everybody. There was a guy that was working in the lobby at Sloan Kettering in New York City. He became famous because he would walk out from behind the counter and hug the cancer patients that were coming in just to let them know, you're not alone, I'm praying for you. Like Everybody knew who this guy was, and he, he didn't have a high-status job. Didn't matter. He had God. You have God in you. And it's worth making the effort to try to let him out in the way you interact with everybody, right? We're going to be held to that standard. And look, you know, there, there's, a, there's many examples of the Christian church not behaving in a Christian way. Many. We repent of that. We have to. We can't say it never happened. It did. But what we can say is we serve a God who wants to show us how to do it right. And we're not going to get caught up in a religious spirit, a bunch of rules and regulations. Trish and I both said, if there was no power in the church, we would go back to the old way of living again. That's why we can go forward is because we know there's power to change and we can act as the go-between for somebody who's hurting to help God speak through us to get them saved to get them healed to get them delivered to break addictions off their life we may not be the most perfectly skilled at it but I can tell you what we're hungry and we're pressing in and we're not going to stop trying we hope you can come with us <laughs>